Um, it's the fair after we after we start to check your uh, YouTube if you uh, those things we share on Facebook. You remember? Let me send it to you, Sifa. Really? When we start, you can put it on. Those things we share uh, that we use to fly, those long text, send it to you, Sifa, so you can, I want her to check on YouTube later. Okay, Alex, we're about to start. Ooh, good morning, Lagos. Good morning, Nigeria. Ah, like a gazelle freed into the wild forest, the year 2023 is galloping to an end. Can you believe that? Today marks one week to the first anniversary of this program. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Good morning. Welcome to the Vintage Talk Show with the Fudge. Wherever you are listening to us on Top Radio 90.9 FM. Same goes to all of you who are watching us live on Facebook and YouTube. You too. Thank you for joining us. Well, Today on Point Blank, I will be focusing on a strange but fragile issue. Ad identifying the thick line, I believe it's thick, the thick line between personal injury and the bruised ego against the need for national punishment or payback. We shall interrogate the motives and reasons for the alleged call to go on a national strike next week, Tuesday. We'd love to hear from you, your views on these and that via our studio line. Well, our guest on Talking Points understands the true meaning of role playing role play and in real life he has also advanced in this special gift being different things to different people before we go further uh, let's knock on the doors of our ancestors yes what have they got for us today i quote all monkeys cannot hang from the same branch. Yes, we heard that. All monkeys cannot hang from the same branch. I hope the unionists and activists are listening. All Nigerians cannot hang from the same laborious tree. Make us understand the real reason for this, your next strike. Uh, if you decide to, to disobey, the, uh, the the industrial court's order to desist from this uh, latest journey. Well, here on Vintage Talk Show, we'll continue to speak truth to power and shine light on dark spots. My name is still Femi Akitunde Johnson. My friends call me Fudge. Well, my aunt, my usual, well, actually my regular co-anchor has taken a leave of absence today and uh, stepping in, in to co-pilot this program this morning is our regular analyst, Alex Ogundadi. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Lagos. Good morning, Esife. Uh, it's um, I don't think it's a... 
I don't think it's a, I don't think it's <laughs> stage fright. Um, Alex's voice disappeared just as he was doing the introduction with AC Fair. I'm sure we'll pick it up shortly. Um, well, of course, as she has, as Alex has revealed, AC Fair is also with her. Good morning, AC Fair. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm fine. I'm doing well. That's very nice. Alex, are you hear me? Uh, Alex has a network issue. Okay, get ready. Alex, can you hear me now? Alex, can you hear me now? Hello, Alex. <clears throat> Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Hello. I you now. Hello. Yes, I can hear you now. Um, I'm going back on air. Minimize your. Can you hear me? Is it are you ready? Yes. Well, let's kick off with our usual appetizers as we sort out uh, Alex's issue with his voice uh, and all that. Uh, uh, usual Nigerian entertainment news, global trends, and reviews of major newspaper headlines. Isifi, are you ready for us? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, let's go. I used to work in Lagos traffic. Crayon mm. recounts. Popular singer Charles Chibweze Chuku, also known as Crayon, has recalled that we used to work with Lagos traffic while they explained the driving force behind the title of his album, Trend to Triumph. Mm. The story, we moved from Orile Gomu, Lagos, to a face me, I face your apartment in Ojo when I was seven years old. We were about nine or ten people sharing a room. As the first child of my parents, I faced a lot of financial struggles while growing up. I was sent home regularly from school because of unpaid fees, and I ended up taking a unified tertiary matriculation examination, ETME, five times. Wow. The father said, I was working on my music at that time and also helping my mom at the market where she sold food. Sometimes I would even off the food in traffic. Going from that kind of life to being signed by Living Records and on my way to becoming a global superstar is my triumph. Mm. I used to be in the trenches and now I am triumphant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord on behalf of uh, uh, Crayon, you said? Yes, uh, yes. Crayon. Moving from the streets mm. to stardom. That's great. From trenches to triumph. triumph. Nice one for him. Uh, that's the usual story of grass to grace. And uh, he should now borrow himself sense and, and don't go back or fall back into the trenches. Uh, apply, apply sense and ad a good quality advice so that you can uh, invest sensibly and uh, prolong your stay in triumphant land. Okay, let's move on. Don't call me for access welfare only. <laughs> Shanjord wants colleagues. Actress Shanjord has warned her colleagues in the movie industry to stop adding out to only groups where she has to contribute to the welfare of others. <laughs> Venting on her Instagram page, Shanjord claimed that her colleagues would never call her for opportunities to earn a living, but find ways to make her lose funds in the name of welfare. <laughs> she claimed waking up one Thursday morning to find herself in 15 WhatsApp groups. Well, wow. we have been to say for our colleagues. She wow. further said, You have never called me for work before, but whenever it's time to make a contribution, you will form a WhatsApp group and put my name. <laughs> Switching to Pigeon, she added, You they do work, oh, you they pay people, oh, you know, ever one day, remember, say, Oh, make me call this woman. She and George, make sure you will take pass for this major movie or work, or even if now I can pass, make I just small Gary joke for us with my children. <laughs> well. As um, as um, harsh as it as it sounds, it, it, it makes sense. Yes. Uh, you you are always called. Imagine finding yourself in fifteen WhatsApp. I, I believe it's slightly over exaggerated, but to find yourself in fifteen WhatsApp soliciting for funds. I mean, if you, even if you have only one thousand, that's around fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. And here is a person who has who has not been uh, working. As actively as she would have liked, or that, or as before. So I appreciate <laughs> this issue. 
I, sometimes I get those things and, uh, and you just do what you can. I don't need to complain. Just do what you can and God sees your heart. Because you never know. Time is switch. It may be your turn next time. And people have to solicit funds for you. Uh, but the industry should uh, buckle up. Do something more tangible, more effective in terms of welfare and, and mm. safety nets and all that. Okay, Sifa, let's move on. This kid steps back from music. Multiple award-winning music star, Ayode Jibalogun, popular known as Whiskey, has announced plans to take time off the music scene. In a series of Instagram posts on Sunday, 5th of November 2023, the essence Kuna stated that he will be taking four or five years off the music scene, adding that he's considering taking up football or golf. <laughs> Writing the pidgin English, he wrote, back in four years, they could not papa chop in money small, or maybe five, or I can still go, they play ball now. <laughs> this would be the first time this kid will be announcing a break from music. Oh, in 2019, the singer via his ex account disclosed his plan to take a break from music. Tweeting, gone too much, thank you. Okay, so uh, when, is, when, is, when he says papa, he, he meant himself, right? Yes, the first yes. <laughs> well, it's good. When you, when you make good money and you have traveled far and wide mm -hmm. doing all sorts of things, it'd be nice to find a space to rest and uh, recapture. Though you should not try football, you don't mm -hmm. go from five pounds to five, you don't break his leg or something. I saw him tapping, uh, uh, you know, jogging ball the other day, in the, I think in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium or something uh, the other day. Golf would be nice. There are the rich man's, yeah. It's very leisurely and all that. So you will enjoy your money and all. And then um, prying eyes will not be there. All the ones that they will not make you or dribble you. And then everybody will start <laughs> laughing at you and making fun of you and all that. <laughs> okay, good for him. Uh, yeah. Ibu updates. Doctors and physicians are told less to save his life. Wow. Mm -hmm. A new statement from the family of actor John Okafo, aka Mr. Ibu. This shows that one of his legs has been amputated to keep him alive. News of the oh, fact that the actor was ill and required financial assistance for his treatment. The statement shared on the actor's Instagram page on Monday, 6th of November 2023, reads Good afternoon, Nigerians. We want to appreciate everyone who has come through for our dad, saying we are grateful to the announced statement, mm. and only the good Lord can thank you all enough for every help you have rendered. Well, it was revealed that the actor had undergone seven successful surgeries, wow. including the application of one leg <coughs> to keep him alive. Wow, wow, wow. 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 It's, um, it's sad. It's, it's, uh, it's sad. With all the mm. efforts to to get him good treatment and all that, mm. he still has to lose one one leg. Wow, 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 wow. Mm. Well, yes, you still keep hope alive. He's still is alive. Yes, That's what's yes, important. Yes, yes. Uh, minus one leg, it's still a good life, and mm. you can still, I mean, uh, make, well, yeah, make way out of it, get prosthetic uh, fittings and all that. Mm. Uh, Nigerians who are, who are inclined should continue to support Mr. Ibu uh, so that he can get um, fully rehabilitated and continue to give us those comedic uh, uh, plays and all that. Mm. Okay? Is it, do you still have more? Yes. Yeah. We. Okay. Alex is back. <laughs> he wants to say something. Okay. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say we wish him a full recovery. Um, it's not the end of life, even though he has lost a limb. We know of people who have lost a limb and who are still, you know, contributing their optimum in what they do. So I'm, I'm wishing him a full recovery, and I hope to see him back to do what he does best. Yeah, amen. No bad. Naira Mali Sam Larry granted 20 million Naira bill. On Monday, the 6th of November 2023, a magistrate's court sitting in Yaba, Lagos State, granted bail to the singer, Aziz Fashola, known as Naira Mali, and Balog Mweletu, known as Sam Larry. Mm. The bail amount was set at 20 million naira, and it came with three responsible sureties. Naira Mali, Sam Larry, along with two others, 
had been arranged and detained on 6 October due to their alleged involvement. The circumstances surrounding the death of the musician, Larry Oluwa Loba, better known as Mobad. The magistrates, Adiola Latubosun, other does, as part of the deal conditions, the defendants are to surrender their passports and make weekly appearances at the state criminal investigation department party. Any attempt to contact me directly will be recorded and potentially disclosed in open court. Well, the, the chaps are out mm. and um, they can face um, the system and uh, find themselves, I mean, find a way of extricating themselves from if they didn't do anything about it. And but, I like uh, the my, uh, last word. They don't the, come to my, don't come to me. Don't don't go through the back and say you want to see this. I will expose you and all that. I I like the fact that given that um, caveat, uh, so that nobody will play hanky panky with her. Yes, Alex, you were saying something. Yeah. Um. I, if I heard Esifer right, she said it was a magistrate court that yeah. uh, tried them. Magistrate courts, do they handle criminal what? cases? Isn't it civil? Uh -huh. I think the usually the you know the police people they would first go to the magistrate court to try and do the bail thing so that they can now uh, release them for uh, a higher jurisdiction. I don't know how. I mean, they, they, I think they do because when, whenever we are arrested during those uh, military era of uh, for sedition for for defamation of character, you know, you journalists will always find something to say about military people and usually very bad. And then they will just clamp you into a panty. And then next time you open up, you see yourself at the magistrate court. And they say it's a criminal <laughs> case. Then they say, John, I John, I John, I John. You'll be there for like months before they realize that, okay, it's not supposed to be magistrate. So they, they will strike it out just to, just to punish you. I hope this is not the case here. But you see, the policemen are more comfortable uh, uh, performing their whatever legal abracadabra they want to do before the magistrates. Uh, courts. I think that's the, we will still see them in the higher courts, uh, I'm sure, subsequently. Uh, and that's the last one you have for us, Esife. Yes. Oh, great. We'll be back shortly. Uh, we're still on top radio, 90.9 FM. Let me play this. Uh, uh, this uh, we need to pay some bills. And we'll take a short break. We'll be back with Global Trends. Okay, so I'll be doing the global trends and I'll banter with you uh, since uh, Baba is out of sight now. All right, Can sir. It was his birthday on the 8th of November. Yes, so, yeah, I would say it. You too, you was the only 6th, Abby. I <laughs> no, the, the 5th, the 5th of November. Yes, yes. The only 5th, right? Yes, is sir. Fifth, fifth, okay. five, yeah. Are you guys, you hear it from us? Yes, 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 that reminds me. That reminds me, I'm going to yap you. <laughs> yes, we are back. We are back on the Vintage Talk Show. I, I just, I, I was just, I mean, I was just notched now. I, I, I remember, I don't know why my guys, we're playing hunky punky with me last week. Or is it this week? This week, actually. This week, my colleagues, yeah, we're, we're <laughs> celebrating their birthdays without letting me know. So that I do not call them out for drinks or for for something to refresh and all that. Um, Alex was on the 5th of November. Um, uh, Mr. T was on uh, the 8th of November. I mean, I mean, I don't know what, what they were scared. I just like three or four or five days away from my mind, and they chose to to hide it. Well, in spite of your sins, we forgive you. Happy birthday, Alex. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank uh, you very birthday. much, sir. Uh, 
more 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 grease to your elbow or more elbow to your grease, whichever works well for you. <laughs> I think they both work. <laughs> Thank you okay, very much. Let's move, to, let's move on to global trends and see what the world uh, is saying. The Portuguese Prime Minister resigned. Portuguese Prime Minister Antonio Costa has resigned after investigators searched his official residence as part of a corruption probe involving lithium mines and hydrogen production. <laughs> wow. Uh, not in my country because of their searching. <laughs> <laughs> resigned. <laughs> Definitely not in Africa. You won't see that happen. Not, not in Africa. Okay. But we'll get there. We are, we are evolving. We'll get to a point where we will start having people. I mean, that, but there will be so many people. <laughs> there will be so many people, Alex. If they follow this culture, we'll be having like 10 a day. <laughs> In Nigeria. <laughs> okay. Another says grenade death. A close aide to the head of Ukraine's armed forces was killed when a grenade he received as a birthday present exploded. Wow. The country's interior minister has said, Ukrainian commentators are questioning the official account of a tragic accident. Well, I don't know. It's a very tragic thing. You know, but how, how do you come? OK, you are in a war time, so you are looking for uh, emblems of war. How do you? How do you give grenade, live grenade as as birthday present? Oh God! That's, 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 I mean, uh, perhaps it was not identified as a fragile thing or a delicate thing, and someone dropped it, and ah, that was that was a, a tragic birthday. Um, uh, I, I, Alex would like this. Room with a deal. Uh, an Italian judge has ordered the seizure of 779.5 million euros. Uh, that's about um, $835 million, 676 British pounds sterling. I don't want to uh, go convert it to Naira. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> the zeros may be a bit too many from Airbnb over alleged tax evasion. Prosecutors say the short-term rental giant failed to collect a tax from landlords on around 3.7 billion euro uh, of rental income. Wow. Wow. Well, so it happens all over the world. We don't, it's not only in Nigeria that we evade taxes. Yeah. Uh, Let's see, let's see a couple more. Today we want to be post haste. Uh, UN warns violence in Sudan verging on pure evil. Violence against civilians in Sudan is verging on pure evil, a senior United Nations official warned on Friday as the humanitarian crisis in the country worsens and ethnic violence escalates in the western region of Darfur. Mm. Oh. Oh, it's now yeah. close to pure evil. What the catastrophe that's going on in Sudan? Oh. oh, so there's a place called Darfur in Sudan. Yes, yes, it's. The uh, I know there's a place called Darfur in Somalia too. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's the more popular Darfur. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it's a sad point. thing. It's a sad thing. Very, very tragic. Very tragic. Well, they're killing civilians all, of, all over the place. Yeah, and it, yeah, it brings to mind those who are crying for war, you know, uh, Niger and all that. It gives you examples of what can happen in a crisis oh, like that. What kind of silly cry is that? Crying for war. What do they want war for? Eh? So that so that they can they can they can get more money for our equipment. Well, let's move on. There's surgical breakthrough. Surgeons in New York say they have performed the world's first complete eye transplant. Eye transplant on a man. 
it's not certain he will regain vision. Uh, report shows the impression. I mean, is he, uh, it's a complete. That means they, they would move from one person um, <laughs> and put it in the other person. In the, in yeah. the other, all the strands, all the lines, all the veins. All wow. the nerves, you know, the you know how complex that can be. They, they will have wow. to operate under a microscope so that they can link some of those nerves that are very small together. Tiny, hardly, you know, can, the eye can hardly see it. Okay, um, we we come to the second part of the uh, global trends. Let's take a short commercial break. Wow. Did you did you read about uh, a nuclear threat that Israel are considering using a nuclear bomb in the war against I Palestine? I read it, but it, it seemed like um, like a hint, some kind, some kind of deterrence threat. I think they are grandstanding. They are grandstanding, yes, really, because uh, a nuclear bomb. The the backlash is is terrible for for years. You still be yeah. feeling it. And the support all over the world. Yeah, radiation and all those things. We are going back. Yes, we're back. We're back on the vintage talk show. Yeah, I have one or two more items to conclude. Um, Robert De Niro, the actor's company, Canal Production, has been ordered to pay a former assistant $1.2 million in damages over claims of gender discrimination and retaliation. Jurors did not find the actor personally liable. That's my favorite, that's my favorite um, American uh, actor. Uh, Thank God they didn't uh, say it was uh, directly involved. But to pay 1.2 million, 2 million to an assistant for for discrimination, for discrimination, it's a, it's a it's a big stain, it's a big stain. Uh, finally, Liverpool and Colombia forward. I mean, that's um, football player Lewis Dare's father was released on Thursday. By the left wing guerrilla, um, guerrillas who killed at him 13 days ago. Uh, that would be 14 days now. This was uh, yesterday's news. Luis Manuel Diaz uh, was handed over to the United Nations and the Catholic Church officials by members of the National Liberation Army. He was abducted on the 28th of October in the family's hometown, Barrancas. The footballer's mother was also seized, but was free within hours. It's, it's great to, to hear that. Yeah. I remember him coming on to score against Luton Town to get an equalizer. Uh, a couple of, uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, even with all this um, trauma of, uh, of a kidnap father. It just reminds me of John Michelobi uh, when he was playing uh, for Chelsea. Yeah. And in Nigeria, and his father was kidnapped twice. <laughs> yeah. it, interesting times we are. Well, Alex, we have come to the end of the global trends. Uh, we'll take a short break and come back. By the way, uh, today is uh, the, is a good day. Also, it's a, it's a great uh, uh, birthday for someone I consider as a as a, as a great person. Eleventh uh, of November. It's uh, 
birthday of Pastor Tunde Bakari. Uh, happy birthday, Pastor B. And um, more power, more fire, and uh, less, uh, less controversies. Uh, have a wonderful, have a wonderful Good luck with that. <laughs> less controversies. <laughs> okay, we, we'll take a break and have this music. Let's play this music. Arasta says, um, Bloody Samaritan. I'm not one. Uh, let's see what, what she has to say about it. You said good luck with that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you will get to that. Got this, the man will soon be 70, so it can go on like that. Pastor Bakari is an activist. He's an activist. <laughs> good morning, Bustle. Good morning, Good timing. You're only two minutes late. Hello, Boston. <clears throat> Hello, Boston. Your microphone is off. Oh. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, we are we are we are live on Facebook, uh, Boston. So I just want to warn you. I've been following I've been following on Facebook since I even reacted to the comment oh, on the, the magistrate court. Oh, yeah, oh, the, oh the, the device is so far from me. I don't see the thing. How are you? Oh, you have okay. come back from making some money. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Mr. Alex. Good morning, Good morning, bro. Welcome. <laughs> yes, sir. You people will do the bad day still. Though. <laughs> but, yeah, we could. No you know what? Place. Since <laughs> since the three of us are in November, we could look for uh -huh. a date and do it together. So yeah. November yeah. to remember. Yeah, hey, that's a nice call. You should be in journalism, <laughs> man, but <laughs> November I'll go, to I'll, remember. I'll, I'll dust my Okupoli certificate. <laughs> Okay, okay, you, yes, you did. You read my scrum in the book. Okay, <laughs> it is true. It is true. It is true. So, yeah, welcome to the to the fold. Yes, sir. Morning, sir. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So, okay. what do you think you about that? Here. I don't know if we could take that hint, the magistrate okay. court thing. Okay. You can briefly have okay. your opinion on that. Yes, sir. The magistrate court is the court, court of first instance, and it has a um, criminal jurisdiction. So okay. it also yeah. has, yes, then the civil jurisdiction is up to 10 million. Now, what happens is if it gives a judgment and then you, um, the thing is more than 10 million, it can refer to a higher court or where you get a judgment in excess of the jurisdiction of the court, what you take is restricted to the jurisdiction of the court that's the monetary award so it can't be more than 10 million so that's basically what it is but it has now but it doesn't have the uh, jurisdiction on murder that's for high court mm, i thought so i thought so <clears throat> yeah, i'm going on there We are back and we are more complete. Joining us this morning is our legal expert and our friend, Olutu Bosun Oshifowora. Good morning, Bosun. Morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be here. Great to hear your voice again. We're on the municipal review section and we have quite some noisy headlines. Today, you remember, is the election 
elections will be held now. What they call it, mid-circle election in Imo, Kogi, Bayelsa, They're electing their new governors, and um, based on antecedents, the states, uh, as they say, they are not easy. So we expect um, we pray for peace and uh, a civil conduct of election. Mm, that's our prayer. By nightfall, that uh, the peace will fall on that uh, those states. But let's start with um, the Saturday Independence, <laughs> and this is a this is an alarming statement from. As of course, you know, is the academic staff union uh, uh, of universities. Um, it says no to students' loan scheme. <laughs> that's that's procurement repayment cumbersome. That's for the parents. Um, beneficiaries risk two year jail term. That's for the dons. And it will reduce depression and financial pressure. That is from NANS. <laughs> is there no, no to, no to students loan scheme? Uh, what is the problem of us? Are they the one collecting this? Are they students? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you, if you look at the conditions for obtaining the loan, in my own opinion, they don't even have to say no because. <laughs> the conditions are very strident, and the kind of indigent students who you feel will try to get access to it don't really, it's going to be difficult for them to meet those conditions, you know? So I don't know that loan, uh, if you've gone through the conditions like you getting a reference or a referee in a very high position, you know, conditions like that and many others, uh, that scheme, they don't even need to say no. It's going to be very difficult for the people who it's targeted at to have access to it. That's what I think. And let, let the scheme be. And then, the, the, I mean, the, 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 once beaten or twice beaten, or in fact, five times beaten, one should be wiser. We've had loan <laughs> scheme in the past that have gone bankrupt and all that. So I think they've learned their lessons. Let the scheme be, which will be no, no. Let the students, they have challenges going through. Yes, procurement, repayment, it's not easy anywhere in the world. Even the US, they are still looking for how to, how to subsidize it, or how to cut it or how to save them from it. Yes. And, and um, you know, closely linked to that, there's the issue of them giving universities autonomy. Then there was more news that 50% of their internally generated revenue is going to be paid into a government account. I, I, I see some contradictions in those policies. <laughs> Don't they collect subventions? Don't they collect annual subventions? Yeah, they will pay, they will do tight. That's normal. Uh, I don't, I mean, is it not awkward that they are collecting some subvention and they're supposed to be autonomous? Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Boston, this is for you. I don't know if you can speak to this issue. It, in the Saturday Tribune, it says, court stops NLC, TUC, from going on strike. Uh, it's, a moment, it's a focus of our point blank today. But will you, um, Labor counters and says, strike starts midnight Tuesday, Labor unions. Uh, it, it, what, what, do you, what happens when Labor, uh, the, the unionists, don't, um, respect this kind of uh, order from the industrial court um first of all uh, we, we, everybody is subject to the courts and i'm um, subject to the order of the court um where you disagree with the order of the court you have the right to appeal i don't think labor will be doing itself well um by disobeying the court and not wanting to follow the order of the court as far as their declaration for strike is concerned now but what is more worrisome is the basis for which um labor is going on strike i reckon earlier in the week they have talked about um um the fact that uh, the labor president 
Ajayro was assaulted in Imo, and that is the basis for their going on strike. I think it's a little narrow-minded, and um, that should not be the basis for strike as far as I'm concerned. Now, but they seem hell-bent on it, and nobody is stopping from asserting themselves. But the fact that there's an order of court in that regard definitely stops them from going ahead with such activity. So they, what, what is left to them is to go to court and seek a way to vac. I mean, the court will vacate that order. Or if the court can't do that, then I think they can go to a higher court because it's part of their right to strike, to picket, and all that. But the basis on which they are doing it, how that will fly in the face of the court, still remains a bit of a mystery to me. So that's that's just my position. Okay, uh, thank you. We're going to have a short um, uh, review today. All the papers, virtually all, is about Imo, Bayelsa, Kogi, governorship election today, Punch, Sun, all of them is about 5 million voters doing this and that and that. Uh, so we're going to, let me just take one more from the Saturday Punch and uh, close the gates on this. It says, yeah, this is a sad story. The husband molested my daughter, attacked me for confronting him on the woman. Sorry about that too. <clears throat> She's talking about her husband. I hope that's not the father of her daughter. I suspect not. Um, Saudi Arabia to invest in Nigeria's refineries uh, supports forex reforms. Today is not today now, but it's not Saturday. You know what I mean, Alex? It's not. Yeah. There, no, yeah. Just, just lecture, lecture, lecture everywhere. Yeah. What? Uh, that to us and to you, that's the end of the municipal review. We'll be back shortly uh, with uh, Point Blank. And we have two massive voices uh, joining us uh, and to in interrogate the Tuesday, the Tuesday, uh, what's it called? Labor action uh, precipitated by personal injury to the NLC president that uh, Bosu is finding very difficult to understand. I will hope we'll get more understanding from those who have been covering this area of uh, our, of our society for many decades. We'll be back shortly. Let's take this piece by Adekule Gold featuring Davido. Hi, hi. Maybe our labor, labor leaders are on the high or they are on high somehow. <laughs> Here you have it. Hi. By the at the at the only gold. Good morning, Ebo. How are you, Paji? How are you, sir? Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's Good morning, sir. Ebo. You're welcome. I know him very well. Ah. Morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Morning. 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 Yes. Thank you. We'll we'll launch right after this music. Okay. Libo and Wahala. When you think. <laughs> The hammer is the only tool. Everything looks like a nail. <laughs> <laughs> exactly.
Well, we are back on point blank. And um, it's an interesting day, somewhat worrisome day. Maybe to our guest, it's something else. Maybe we are fretting too much and it's not a big deal. Our topic for point blank is Joe Ajero's personal national strike. Should all Nigerians pay for the sins of Imo State? That's what we're talking about. On Tuesday, they've declared they, they will go on strike nationally, nationwide uh, because uh, apparently or purportedly uh, it was van it was brutalized. I was going to say vandalized. It was brutalized somewhere in Imo State while on, I don't know if it's on labor matters or on partisan matters. I uh, will find out from those who know more. And one of them is with us today. As a veteran journalist, author, lawyer, Whoa. activist of many years, and uh, director of, of Center for Media, Law, and Advocacy. We call him Uncle Richie. Good morning, Richard. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. It's great, it's great to, hear, uh, to hear from you after a long thank while. You. Yes, thank you. You have been you have been covering judiciary, uh, partly labor and all that for many decades. And uh, have you have you come across this kind of scenario where, for personal injuries or personal uh, abuse and, and all that, one will call for a national national strike to to like a payback or to get even. Have you, have you seen this kind of thing before? Well, to the best of my recollection, I don't think I have. But you see, um, when that incident happened at um, Imo State, I mean, I was one of the few, I mean, well, I won't say few, some of the people that was quite vociferous and um, in uh, condemning that attack. Uh, I mean, it was horrendous. Because um, yeah, as a matter of fact, um, a friend of mine uh, who is also close to Joe, told me that um, that attack was really, I mean, severe because his hands were tied and uh, they brutalized his face and even that he would be shocked if he doesn't have a spinal cord injury. Having said that, oh. so I, I condemned, I mean, whether it's Joe or anybody for that matter, I mean, I'm against that kind of uh, brutality. I mean, whether it's by police or by government, uh, uh, pay dogs or whatever. I totally condemn it. I can't, I, I can't whether it's Joe or anybody, I, because I, I, I was a victim. I've been victim before under the military, so I, there's no way I can uh, validate that kind of. Uh, even though, don't, even when I made it, even when I made such posts uh, over this issue, so people attacked me and say uh, Joe was Joe was playing politics, blah blah. But I said, what I. Yes, the timing of the protest may be controversial. I mean, because I mean, uh, the pending Imo election, and uh, people may uh, read political meaning to it, particularly since uh, uh, NLC and Joe uh, are, they are led to be pro Labour Party. So one can argue that one that perhaps the timing was wrong, but whether the timing was wrong or right. The attack on Joe Ajero, I mean, cannot be defended at all. Absolutely. No, no, However, yeah. having said that, having said that, now for now, call a national protest on that assault alone. To me, I, I think uh, yeah. it's like um, okay, like uh, what Donald uh, Fashola told me when he was in, uh, as governor in 2011, uh, when doctors went on strike for three months. And I intervened and how to resolve the issue. And he told me, so he put, oh, fire them, fire all of them, fire all the doctors. And that he made it, he made a one profound statement. I said, he said, he said restraint is a major cardinal instrument as a, as a leader. That says you have the power, but you refuse to use that power. 
So it's uh, you know, and the same thing. If I made another post a few days ago condemning this national uh, calling for national strike, I say while my position on the assault on Joe remains unchanged, but to now stretch it further by now calling for a national strike, I mean, it doesn't make any sense because in the first place, you, I mean, you, you, you try to. Uh, um, when you when you use strike at every slightest opportunity, I mean you 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 I mean you you, uh, you diversify yourself. Mm. You diversify yeah. yourself. It's just like uh, yeah. uh, America to use nuclear power mm. at every every provocation by yes. Iran yes. by yes. whatever. Okay, I will use nuclear power. I use nuclear power. I mean, does it doesn't make any sense? So and. Whether I like or not, if they proceed with that, because in the first place, if uh, in, are the um, aviation workers, um, uh, do they have any trade disputes with the employers? Particularly, when okay, for example, you said strike on Tuesday, then uh, was it two days ago you went to Abuja Airport to stop uh, so, for flight. Yes. I mean, no notice, nothing. People have this opportunity, medical appointments, they missed it because yeah. of, of, of this insensitivity. It doesn't make any sense. So, and particularly when you, when, let me just take aviation, let me just take aviation uh, the, uh, as an example. That, uh, that is a sector that is struggling. That is struggling. Yeah. And now you now further put them under stress. Of course, your, your members will be the, they, they will lay off, they can lay off the, the members, where they were, if the human people decide to, to shut our operations where we have not paid trade this with you, they will lay you off. So it doesn't make any sense, absolutely. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, Uncle Richard. Thank you very much. Uh, we have yeah. your your co-activist here uh, online. I remember you, you, you were both uh, very active in the media in years past, uh, still yeah. active in the media and, uh, and advocacy. And I remember one time you were both on the editorial board of the Masses newspaper. <laughs> of course, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Is that uh, right with us? I hope you can hear me. Is a journalist, unionist, activist, and director of International Press Center. I'm my former president, national president of uh, of National Association uh, of uh, Nigerian mm -hmm. Students. Today is um, presiding over. <laughs> international media welcome to the vintage talk show larry arogundadi good morning <laughs> good morning <laughs> fine <laughs> Richie, how are you are <laughs> good morning i hope yes, you can yes, hear me and very, and very well chairman you're yeah. welcome chairman you're welcome uh, we we forgot to also say he was once chairman of lagos and uj okay. It and that's why yeah. we call him chairman. <laughs> uh, uh, there are many epilets, many so titles many, to link you with. So many, but we do not have time. So we many have titles. Time. So many titles. Uh, thank you for joining us. Fela, uh, Fela, said, Nigeria, Fela said uh, Nigerians like a uh, title. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm here. Thank you. I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I have three questions for, for, for both of you, and um, uh, Uncle Richard has answered one. And I wanted to quickly also say this Have you ever experienced a situation where a personal injury to a national labor leader would lead to a national, a nationwide strike? In all your years of editorial duties and reportorial work, have you ever come across such such scenario? Oh, well, I am trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, how, do, how do they put it? I'm trying to, you know, juggle, uh, juggle my memory or something. And uh, it's, it's actually quite rare, but we've had, you know, uh, protests when labor leaders or leaders of mass movements are attacked in the, in the course of exercising their rights maybe to freedom of participation, freedom of expression. Uh, you know, even under the military, when gatherings were scattered, we just mentioned the uh, Ghani I remember when uh, they were to have a symposium 
on uh, alternatives to SAP, which you will remember at uh, yeah. Ghani's uh, chambers, which the military yeah. disrupted. And, uh, you know, we, we protested mm -hmm. and uh, we condemned that. So uh, really, I don't think there is uh, possibly, you know, uh, you know, precedent. But what we've had uh, been, you know, protests, rejection, uh, demonstrations when uh, leaders of mass organizations, including uh, trade unions, are maltreated by the state. And uh, like Richie said, in the case of uh, Richard Ajero, I mean, sorry, in the case of uh, Joe Ajero, well, what really happened in Oweri uh, is something that uh, we should first and fall, uh, first of all, condemn, really, yeah, because yeah. Uh, I've read a lot of comments. I, I just wrote a little about it on Facebook. And some people were saying, you yeah, shouldn't have gone there, uh, you know, he's partisan and so on and so forth. So well, we can debate all that. But what I keep telling people is that uh, we shouldn't, because of disagreement on the uh, approach, on methodology, uh, end up endorsing uh, fascist tendencies you know? in our country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, because yeah. it, it doesn't then mean that the other side should take laws into their own hands. If you felt yeah, that what yeah. he was doing, the Imo state was illegal, the state government or any aggrieved party could, could go to court, could even report to the police. The police can ask him to show, but not that kind of uh, molestation. So we shouldn't we shouldn't endorse that. Now, on the, on the question okay. of uh, you know the, the the strike. Now, what I think is. Uh, because yesterday I was trying to seek clarification from uh, one of um, the comrades at NLC on you know the strike itself. My sense was that you know they want they want the action was uh, supposed to be targeted at uh, the Imo state government because uh, I, I got to know that flights were cancelled because some of our yeah. uh, election observers were supposed to go to Imo state. And then later on, you know, we heard about what was happening in Abuja. So I, I thought that uh, uh, what they were calling a national action really was actually supposed to be a protest against the Imo state government. So I, I think probably they didn't get what they were saying right in terms of whether this was right. a national strike or whatever. Uh, for, for me, you know, because if you look at the past couple of weeks, we've had series of threats of strike action. Uh, you know, strike action by, you know, NLC. And uh, when I saw that uh, statement, the initial one that there will be a strike, I just felt that, um, you know, we need to advise our colleagues in the labor leadership that uh, strike is not something that you wave, you know, every now and then, uh, because uh, sometimes it's, it's about strategies, about approach. Otherwise, uh, you, you devalue the, the whole concept of strike itself, and people will begin to wonder, you know, uh, you know, also, especially when in the past these strikes, you know, really, uh, you know, take off. So uh, that was my own, you know, thoughts, and I was trying to convey that, you know, to them that uh, there, there could be there could be protests, and I think if the if the protest was targeted at Imo State government because they are holding them directly responsible, and I was reading somewhere, I don't know if it is true that uh, the state government has apologized. You can have targeted action because you are holding a particular organization responsible. But even at that, we also have to know that election is coming this I mean today, and that should also have informed you know even the way and manner you organize that so that at the end of the day you also don't uh, create a station where people are unable to effectively participate or even observe the elections. Yeah. yeah. The, the buttress what you are saying there's the, like punishing the populace for the action of um some un, unknown um government or whatever that like a tv report uh, came that was blackout in emo state um, as, a, as a protest against uh, the government but the people will suffer more because they are because not the four hour generator in this, in this state house okay my second question will be uh, to um both of you is it, it during the week isa, isa aremu of the Imodu institute of labor studies said that ajero coming in from Imo state i think that's the state of origin and yeah. is setting his yeah. is in a partisan contest has put labor in an awkward situation leading to a perception deficit from the nigerian populace do you share his fears uh babarichi 
yeah, I, I think I, I think I do, uh, because as, uh, the, the timing of that protest. I mean, for me, I support protests at any time. I mean, because we are pro a product of protests, it's legitimate. However, you have to look at the timing and the, then the perception of people, because uh, Joe is from Imo State. In fact, as a matter of fact, somebody told me that when he was being tortured. That he told, uh, that, uh, that when he called him, that he, when he was being tortured, the people said, uh, "Hey, you want to, you think you want to use this protest to to beef up your this is so I can contest for government in 2027." So when there is a perception that yes, it's political that because NLC is supporting labor, so I mean, because perception is, is sometimes stronger than reality. That may not be the real, uh, uh, reality, but the timing, I mean, is uh, so when when it was just barely a week. To the state election, and uh, considering the position of uh, NLC supporting the particular party, that perception is, I mean, is there yeah, out, out there that well, uh, it's for political reason that uh, Joe wanted to contest for governorship in 2027. I want to use that as a launching pad, blah, 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 blah. So that, that perception is there. It may not be the reality, so but that perception is there. So I, I think uh, the issue of uh, Imo states. I mean, and being uh, being from Imo State himself, I mean that's issue of perception that uh, this is partisan, and of course, I mean when you now, as you said, when they when they switch off uh, power in Imo State, I mean the people suffer, and they and that may even be counterproductive, and they say, hey, why why are they punishing us because of uh, hope, and then I mean and that, that may even tilt uh, opinion in favor of hope. I mean, against NLC. So one has to be very careful mm -hmm. when you take any actions so that I mean, uh, you will not, not be misinterpreted. Uh, thank you. Larry, in, in answering that question, I also want you to uh, add this, um, add your candid advice to the leadership, uh, of the, the labor leadership, as we await this, um, we're not sure whether it's going to hold or not going to hold, depending on the, the response to the, uh, court order. What will be your advice based on what is going on as things stand now with the court order, with the way things are going, with the perception of the people and the election being held today, the disruptions and all, all that? What would be your advice in line? I mean, while answering the earlier question about the Jero coming from and starting himself into the issue. Well, um, uh, first, the question of uh, Ajero coming from Imo State. I, I really think that uh, if there are labor issues anywhere uh, that uh, requires the intervention of, uh, the, of the Nigerian Labor Congress or that of the president as a person, it shouldn't really matter uh, if that action is taking place uh, in the state where it comes from. Uh, as a matter of fact, if uh, workers have grievances there, and he does not intervene, that could even expose him to, you know, to allegation of uh, not doing anything because it is a state. Or perhaps, you know, people would say maybe... Let, 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 let me give you... Let me give a perspective from Isa Remu's point of view. He said, okay. usually, so state things are done by the council in the states. That the, 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 the national leadership come like an adversary or like an intervention just to... Uh, um, just to how do you call it mitigate the issue and 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 help both sides so they will not come in actively uh, on the case of the state council well you see that that's it that is that itself is uh, is debatable really because uh, if you have a situation where the state council or you know the state uh, the workers movement is uh, incapacitated um you know the, I, I think the national can stay i recall when i was uh, NANS president and uh, the University of Port Harcourt banned the students union, they expelled the president and uh, we simply moved to the university and they uh, called you know, a student uh, congress and we said it was uh, a, a NANS congress. I remember the vice chancellor there, Professor Cookie called me and said whether that was uh, legal or, 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 or legitimate, and I said it was it was both because you, you had actually parallel. So I, I really, I mean, we shouldn't stretch this thing too far because situations may okay. dictate how you know the labor leadership should intervene. Now, that is one. Okay. Now, if there is a court order uh, on the leadership 
on all these actions. And my own expectation would be that you know labor would comply you know with that uh, you know court uh, order then i i also agree to some extent with richard that as much as possible we need to look at uh, the situation where we are you know deciding on particular you know uh, actions now as to the question of uh, partisanship of labor because of uh, the trade unions uh, support you know for the labor party I feel it's, so this is something we also need to discuss extensively. You know, in Nigeria, it's always the case that if the support had been the other way, and we have also seen instances where in some states, but you know, Lagos and the rest of them, the labor leadership more or less support, so, and people don't complain. So when it happens, but it's about the tradition, really, because we don't, we, we, people don't have that tradition in Nigeria. It, it's not parts of Europe, really. Trade unions traditionally identify with political movements. Yeah. That, so if you go to UK, for example, where you hear, yeah. you know, Labour Party really, it, the, you know, automatically supported by the trade unions in the UK. Yeah. That does not now mean that the trade unions mm -hmm. cannot take up, you know, issues that affect their members. Uh, it, it's all part of, uh, the, you know, the right to freedom of association. And like I said, it's a sensitive matter here. Maybe we need to discuss it further. But I'm not saying that it is not unusual for uh, trade unions or particular organizations to support political parties that part they feel are closer to them in terms of ideology. In America, uh, you know, the, the labor movement usually supports the Democratic Party, and that's where they normally put their vote. But it does not take from them the right to address issues that affect you know workers. So we, we need to. You know, you know, separate that. Otherwise, yeah, I think it's looking to me more like a, like blackmail, because the kind of things that the Joe and Jero leadership are fighting for, I think that will benefit all workers, whether you are PDP or APC. A uh, new national minimum wage, uh, reduction or fuel, you know, fuel hike and so on. These are these are issues that are common to everybody. And then people also said, okay. well, the Peter will be that you supported. Also said he will remove fuel, you know, subsidy. Uh, is the problem the issue now is that it's not Peter Obi that is president. It will have been a different thing if Peter Obi was president and uh, all these economic policies have been put in place and labor is not doing anything. Uh, but like I said, okay. uh, I feel we need to tread carefully. And uh, it's uh, people like Isa Remu who had also been labor leaders that should also, you know, weigh you know their statement because the, I think what we are trying to do here first is to say don't engage in this kind of attacks. On, on labor leaders, even if what they are doing, you believe they are taking a wrong action. I think we need to be unanimous in condemning that. Then we can also yeah, critique, you. you know, the, the the approach, and at the same time, you know, be careful how we do that. So the fact that you know, yes, labor support, I don't think that should take away from labor movement the power to take actions on behalf of all workers. Thank you, Thank you Larry, and I also will advise you to listen to all of uh, Issa Remo's interview before you okay. criticize it. Uh, all right, okay. Oh, well, Absolutely. okay, okay. Permission. Thank you, that, that's necessary, that's important. <laughs> okay, last word from Abarichi. What would be your advice <laughs> to labor leaders as we await Tuesday evening? Well, I, I think I think the court's um, injunction has actually helped the labor <clears throat> to save their face. And I think, I mean, and... Uh, Sorry, Richie, what, yes, what, did the, what did the injunction say, Richie? What did the injunction say, please? Because I've been... Well, I've been what, I, and it's not go ahead. For, it's not go ahead. For the report, I, for the report I, I read, and I mean, that to stop um, NSC and um, CUC from embarking on any strike on Tuesday. So that, I, I haven't said the uh, road order. That's um, based on what I read. But after this um, program, I'm going to call Fabala, Fabala, no, answer to NSC. Uh, for us to discuss on this issue. So, because um, if, um, I, I, let me, let's assume hypothetically that labor with regards the court order, the shrine will not go beyond one day. I mean, from our experience. Mm. So, mm. then you will have lost faith that, okay, you will disobey court order, not what happened. Uh, I mean, so I, I think the court order actually, I mean, I will, will save the face of labor. And labor, actually, as Larry said, I mean, they to, strategize on how to approach issues not everything you use the 
um, um, instrument of strike. I mean, protests there be they can be simultaneous protests the whole time in states. That's that's I mean, that's, to me, that's more effective yeah. than than yeah. Um, go on try go on try that mm-hmm. not actually effective. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. That's the, you've heard the voices of uh, Richard Akinola, uh, Director of uh, Media Law and Advocacy, mm-hmm. and Larry Rogundade, Director, both of them are they refuse to say Executive Director. Okay, Director <laughs> of International Press <laughs> Center. Thank you, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts with us on this labor they, matter. You know, you didn't even you know, add the, the executive, executive director. <laughs> you know, just like we have executive governors. <laughs> I don't know what I would say to you. I don't know what I said to you. I said to you. Thank you, very much. Well, we're, we're, there are issues we would think because of that we can't say on here and uh, on, on yes, approaches. So, but, uh, well, on here we can say. Thank you. I say a lot of things listening to the music of Buju never stop. But before then, let's pay some bills. Kanayo, hey, Kanayo. Good morning. Kanayo, oh, Kanayo. Very well, good morning to FAJ. <laughs> FAJ, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Good to see your face after I many so. years. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been, but I know you've been doing well. <laughs> thank God, thank God, and you also. Thank yeah, you for thank joining you. us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. After the music, we will launch. All right. We have so much to talk about. All right, I'm here. And by the way, we don't do politics here, so we are not doing political issues. Okay. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for warning me. I remember politics. you remember I'm from Imo State. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, the hotbed. Yes. Prince, you're welcome. Uh, we Thank met you. many years ago when you were doing public relations in Surulere. Yeah. I was working for the Punch then. Okay. It's my yeah. pleasure. You're welcome. Even after even after law school, I still do public relations. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. He has his hand in the many pies. <laughs> you have to be. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, we are, we are almost we are going on live now. It is still the Vintage Talk Show with the Faj, and I'm still here with Alex Ogunda. Uh, we are moving on to talking points. Earlier, you heard the voices of Richard Akinola and Larry Rogundadi talking about Joe Ajayro, uh, about the, uh, the national strike call. I was going to say alleged. We don't know what will happen until uh tuesday evening the court says no a jerry and co says yes we'll see what will happen uh god keep this nation in one piece well i'm talking points our guest is in you may be right if you call him a bibliophile he's well read well driven and has a penchant for collecting degrees and diplomas check this out <laughs> He has a diploma in mass communication at the University of Lagos, BSc philosophy in the University of Lagos, 2005, um, MSc in political science, also University of Lagos, 2010. By the way, it's not from Lagos, though. <laughs> we are coming to that. <laughs> LLB from the University of Abuja, law faculty, 2018, and it was called to the Nigerian bar after it's receiving his uh, BL from the Nigerian Law School, 2019-20. He's also a Nollywood veteran, and perhaps the man whose stock character rules have pinned him onto the hearts of Nigerians as the epitome of traditional sacrifices and ritual practices. Welcome <laughs> to Talking Point. <laughs> Anna, your mother, well, well worldly, we call world famous. It's worldly known, popularly known as Kanayo O Kanayo MFR. It's great to have you on this show this morning. Good thank morning, KOK. Okay. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You're welcome. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for joining thank us. Alex. Thank you. Um, the topic today is from Nollywood to Law Chamber. Uh, challenges and benefits. Um, okay, okay, you have, yep. I've known you for well over 30 years and uh, you, you have remained constant in the industry. Uh, yet you have, you have, I won't call it bold. I would say you have very strong will to venture into another profession. Uh, as late as uh, two, three years ago, I mean, three, four years ago, uh, starting a new venture. What is driving? What is driving you? What is? What is? What are you chasing? What is? What is? What is your problem? So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, Fudge, um Once again, I want to thank you uh, for inviting me to this program. And I want to salute uh, Osifora and Alex. Alex, good to see you again. Yeah, same here, sir. Well, what is driving me, driving me is not crazy. Like they say in law, it's for good cause. <laughs> it's for a good cause. Um, suffice it to say that I've always been, uh, wanted to be a lawyer. So what I have been doing on television all 32, 35 years uh, with Nollywood and so on, uh, is to exploit my talent, hone it, and um, uh, use what I got to get certain things done in society. The clergyman affects souls from the pulpit. The actor does this from the stage. Stage here could be the natural stage of a physical performance or uh, through recorded tapes of a content, and then uh, begin to, people begin to watch what he produced. And from there, the actor can set agenda for the nation, for the world, either of an existing issue or one that is futuristic. 
So I have always uh, uh, done my own beat on stage, speaking for those who do not have a voice, speaking for those who are more, speaking for those who are oppressed through what I do. And the lawyer does almost the same thing, but he is, is more critical. Because when a lawyer makes a mistake in court, it could drive his client to jail for life. Just like when you are on the operating table of a doctor, one single mistake, life is taken. So they hold the ace to life and living. So I have a, you could, you could also set an agenda on television that will, um, reverberate so much in society that people begin to say, oh, we've been living with um, something like this. If you remember the Guinea worm uh, eradication in a born state about 30 something years ago, um, drama bits were done, contents were created. That is a message. And today you cannot talk about Guinea worm and the, I mean, United Nations and so on, all the uh, aid agencies had to come to eradicate eradicate um, Guinea worm. And what was uh, just provision of pipe bomb water and good living environment? And it's been eradicated. That is the power of the media. That is the power we hold as actors, setting proper agenda. So um, I have uh, tried my best uh, to lend my voice uh, as an actor. And again, when you talk about why law? Why not law? Um, it affords me the opportunity of providing a platform for justice. It affords me the opportunity providing an opportunity for entertainment law. Uh, people get hired in, um, in the several professions. At the end of the day, if you're an engineer, you're an ICT person, you're a medical doctor, after uh, putting the lines in correct places as a lawyer, I mean, as a doctor, as an engineer, you call a lawyer to bring a stamp of authority. So the lawyer seals it. And that's the power the lawyer holds. He has a lot to do for the society. And uh, if I tell you what I went through in the law school, you will now know why lawyers are called learned people. <laughs> yeah, Osibora is uh, laughing. Yeah, I, I, my brother, you, you, you are taken through the whole gamut of every discipline, every discipline, mathematics, logic, computer science, and engineering, everything. That's why you have engineering law, you have medical law, you have philosophy of law, you have just everything. Everything is about law. But um, having said that, in conclusion, uh, it's been a worthwhile experience. Uh, I'm a young lawyer, but I'm doing things in the areas of entertainment. Uh, presently, I'm pr producing a, a legal skit or clinic, clinic I call the People's Lawyer. It is a, is a program by which I try to teach people basic elements of the law, uh, what they do, what they, they should do when their rights are breached or violated. For instance, your landlord throws you out where you live without the necessary and statutory notices. You have a right. And people should not uh, think so much that the lawyers are expensive to hire. We'll, we'll have uh, pro bono cases, public interest cases, where lawyers don't charge you money, don't even take transport. They go and prosecute it in the interest of justice. So I'm doing this uh, for free, and uh, it's on YouTube, on Kanayo Kanayo TV, uh, just as my own contribution to the body of knowledge. I've also written a, yeah. I've also written a book. All I'm doing is to add to the body of the law knowledge through the law I've read. Why stay? Okay. Why stay? Why being in entertainment uh, and sometimes doing public relations, as Alex said. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, gentlemen, uh, Alex and Boss, if you have question, you can ask after this. My my second question. Yeah. Okay. I I I read a lot of stuff from you. Um, we share, uh, we share a post. You write a lot nowadays, and you also give speeches, and most of it is arising from the public perception of you as a ritualist or as a. I mean, I mean, you not okay, okay, your your character as a ritualist. Now, sometimes 
The last one I heard, I stopped from you, was titled, Money is Made Through Hard Work, Not Ritual. Uh, Kanayo, Kanayo wants Nigerian youth. Yeah, so, but, but not only youth, even the adult generation, I mean, population. You go on the road, a well-known face because of your um, activity on the, on the screen, and you are hailed for the roles you, you play, but they hail you personally. Therefore, when you see a nonzonko is a witch, wicked woman, all the road, when you see uh, a, 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 a Damasus or uh, 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 an in the manze, you say, um, a shower woman. See, and so when they see you, they say, ah, see that wicked man, that ritualist. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, do you have a situation where uh, you, you, you need to um, overcome your, you have to have some kind of restraints to, to moderate yourself when people you, you thought should know the difference between character and real life don't appear to know and they call you what you are not? <laughs> very, very good question. Um, you know, you summarize it by saying um, ritualist as a character. We have always told people, take the message, leave the messenger. I'm just a messenger. What we do through television or any content platform is to tell a story. And the believability of it is the anchor of whatever it is. If you play a role of uh, an armed robber and people see you in real life and begin to say, hey, something goes so lost or something goes so lost. No, you played it well. It's about flexibility. Yeah, um, let's let's put it here. I'm popularly called nine sacrifice. Let's uh, take it. Uh -huh, that's what um, they call me. But we say you cannot you be successful in life successful in except you make a sacrifice. Now, if we need to exploit what sacrifice means, it has different um, uh, definitions in the Texaros, in the lexicon, and so on. But the, the basic one we talk about is what you have to give in to achieve some level of comfort or success or accomplishment. But people always take the side of this information or story they want. So when you talk about perception, yes, there are people you expect in society who should understand the difference between a character and reality, but they still fall for the same thing. You say, nah, tell me the truth, tell me the truth. Now me and you, they here. You sure say, you know, they go anywhere by midnight. <laughs> so it affords me, I must tell you, Alex, Osifora, and uh, Faj, it affords me the opportunity of preaching and taking home the message anytime yeah. people engage me. And I said to them, I play this role as a character that puts food on the table. And it's, it's meant to give you an information about life. Let's, let's, let's be practical here. How do you dramatize the situation? like it happened at the Federal University of Technology over it, where some students were caught eating their feces for money-making purposes. How do you dramatize it? Also, for I see your face. Alex, I see your face. How do you dramatize it? You need to show how they will end up, because they never end up well. How do you dramatize a situation where a man who lives in a touch house tells you to kill your girlfriend, and sleep with our cause for seven days. On the seventh day, your money will come. How do you dramatize it? It is not. It is these things are not an upsurge of what people watch in movies. Many people have chosen to take the message wrong wrongly. I have been a television face all the 30 something years. Fudge knows me. I've had opportunity. People say to me, when you are going to London, when you are going to America. Don't worry, I'll go give you something. Just take and pass. Now, by the time you come back, you won't be riding this car you ride. I say, okay, I will not tell you I'm not coming. I will avoid you. I won't come to your house again. So we have had such temptation. But there are people, you will tell this, come on, let me give you something. Take and cross. You go give somebody for London. You go give you 10,000, 20,000 pounds. When you come here, I give you 8,000 pounds. Who will take that message? 
So it varies from person to person what you're going to do. Like one pastor told me, don't say you will not embezzle money until, say, 10 billion naira is given to you as fudge to share to people. You will now know whether you have a restraint not to eat bribes. Yeah. Not, when you, not, when you are seeing, not when you are seeing 20 million naira. Alex, fudge, I tell you, don't say you are not corrupt until 10 billion is given to you to dispense. And you're not asking, you're not asking Alex, now nah, bring 20%, come, make a take settle organ. That's when you know you have restraint. Mm -hmm. So it varies from person to person, especially when you have power at your, at your table. So mm. it's a, it's a hard work. There's no substitute for hard work. I said again on this program. I said there is no substitute for hard work. Hard work. I, I, I am not also saying you have to, if you watch the 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 um, coronation of King Charles, did you see the white ram? Mm. If you did. There are still rituals that are done in many places. Before now, rituals yeah. were done for coronation, for establishments, and so on. Even in the Bible, they kill goats, pour the blood, and so on. So what we're saying is this. It was even more prevalent in Europe, ritual sacrifices. But it is nascent in our place that people are killing people to get money. I must tell you, it's nascent. It's not something. Even the Yahoo Yahoo boys, this is a promax of what they're doing now that involves killing people. If you remember, Alex, Osifowara, and uh, Paj, in the 90s or early 90s and late 80s, people were writing letters to Yibo to defraud them. Yeah. And when these things come, we're not, we're not trying to make it look good, but there was no killing. People were just defrauding people. But right now, these guys have gone pro max by their own Yahoo Yahoo that takes life. And we said no. You know, last year I had I had a I had a reply for the then um, Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, who said that uh, Nordy Wood was responsible for the ritual killings from what people watch. And I asked Lai Mohammed. With all the lies you were telling, where did politicians learn how to rig an election? From Nollywood? Is this also from Nollywood? So what we're saying, if you go on the Lagos Ibarra Express Road, you see bodies and so on and so forth. People still are doing things on wantonly, on holy conduct. You know, and mm -hmm. it, it's, left for, it's left for our politicians to start behaving well. Our politicians should start behaving well by making sure that if you have voted for a polit political position, you create jobs. Jobs will take people out of some kind of mindset. Jobs will take people out of some kind of conduct. But this idea of flamboyancy, excessive living by politicians, creates a divide between those who are hardworking and those who want to do things. Yeah. And it's a, it's, a, it's a clear and call for all of us to keep on preaching the message that hard work pays. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. And so be it. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, KOK. Uh, I see that uh, the, the, lawyer, the lawyer tradition is coming in. Alex, we have something for him. I yes. I, um, I, I am I'm a bit troubled about the developments in Nollywood. Um, well, it's still a young industry when you compare it to what's going on in other parts of the world. But there seems to be a trend where a lot of actors either fall into poverty, fall ill, they are unable to treat themselves or get the necessary care to survive situations like that. So what bothers me is, uh, what do you think we can do about the entertainment industry in general to raise it to such a level that actors can actually live off their fees and you know live a normal life without necessarily falling into poverty, falling ill and having to ask people to help them. That's one part of it. Uh, the other part is entertainment law. We see a lot of issues where um, 
the law doesn't is it doesn't really exist and protects a lot of people in entertainment people are just doing things they're playing it by the ear uh, i'll give you a few illustrations i want to shoot a movie i get permits from people in the local area maybe the local government i'm on the street shooting then all of a sudden people get, begin to attack me they begin to bother me begin to ask for money and issues like that and then there's also the issue of copyright um have we really developed that area in entertainment so uh, it's a lot in one but i'm sure you can manage those three areas all right thank you very much alex uh, good to see you again uh, okay. and i want to thank, uh, thank our viewers and listeners uh, for being on this program well um quite unfortunate quite unfortunate that um um uh, a lot has happened in the industry um there's nobody who is created who cannot fall ill in fact in philosophy i remember in those days in the university of lagos our lecturers used to say everything that's created that has life will die one day even even the tree that you here may have uh, existed for 400 years one day will wither it may not wither in your time so people will have the tendency to fall ill which is not uh, a crime the only issues is that uh, you ask yourself basically what helps the social security system or insurance system in the united states and all over the civilized world what helps them achieve what they achieve and what helps them is just simple while you are in active service there are certain stipends you pay to for insurance that takes care of you when is the rainy rainy day comes so you are working very active and you earn say uh four thousand dollars and maybe thirty fifty dollars you're taking from your salary every month to take care of those who are ill so that when you retire from service you can draw from such fund now it is necessary to establish such fund and insurance but the fact is this everything that comes to nigeria near africa turns upside down nigerian actors and entertainers are the ones in the world i'll tell you who behave like they will they don't have they, many of them believe be, behave like they don't, can fall ill many of them are so engrossed in stardom that if you call them for a meeting with other actors or top stars they will not come for that meeting so there is this beefing amongst people who are in the entertainment industry which does not all go well for establishment of such uh, 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 such things as establishing an insurance policy or a social security system that takes care of uh, networks of health for others who are, who, are, who are sick and for you when the rainy day comes. So when you have a situation where I'm aware the Actors Guild under Emeka Rulas as president has tried to establish uh, a platform or social security, uh, social network where from each ending of an actor you know for each ending of an actor some contribution is done to a fund to take care of uh, those who are sick and to take care of uh, those uh, you when you are not in good health but has it been effective the answer is no have the top actors contributed or allowed funds uh, certain things to be taken from their fees the answer is no then on the other hand too i need to say this on this program sometimes alex fudge or if you listen to me sometimes most actors hike their fees for publicity purposes you think an actor is earning two million but his fee is eight hundred thousand. so when he's raining on the social media he behaves like he's a god just to be hired for brands i hope this is very clear because i i'm, I'm a lawyer so i know what i'm talking about i i know i, I can i can call names but i will not i will not so so you have this situation where when when such people are sick when such people are sick you start saying ah but this guy ends well 
this guy ends well. Why would he be doing this? And because of the shame of coming to the public to ask for money, the illness may have eaten a deeper part of him before he asked for help. Because you know his image is high on the social media. If he now comes out to say, I don't have 10 million, people will say, he's a lie. Alex, tell us the truth you have, you don't want to bring out. You have lived a fake life. I am an actor. I am an actor who is popular, but I live, I don't live this uh, flamboyant life. I don't live. It, it's of no use. I'm already popular. Why would I be trying to impress people? So it's a very, very sad one. But ultimately, I want to use an evil word here. And that evil word is Onye who is it? Who is, who is it complete for? Kind of. There's nobody in this world. Even the widow. If the, the even as a king, even born a boy. If any of them is sick today, unless they have insurance abroad and they're on dialysis, for instance, a dialysis will drain you no matter how rich you are. Let's be realistic. There's nobody. There's if Dan Gote, if Dan Gote calls for the daughter's wedding. It has to be in a field or stadium. His house cannot take all his guests. It shows you we all need each other, either in sickness or in health. But the thing is this, it behoves on the industry to establish a social security system by which they can take care of. Listen, there are HMO groups who, if actors agree, who, if musicians agree, can pay certain funds into, you don't, you don't have to, I mean, would I, because I'm paying a fund into a HMO, start pretending that I'm sick? No. But that 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 that's taken from your earnings monthly, takes care of others. But actors, and uh, actors, especially the top ones, you know, have been uncooperative. I'll leave, I'll leave it there. But it's a very, sad, a very sad one. If I mention on this program the information at my disposal of the number of top actors who are sick, it will shock you. You've only heard about Mr. Ibu because he came to the public to ask for, uh, and, uh, to ask for uh, uh, some support. But I tell you again, for the, Mr. Ibu, if you remember three weeks ago, I came hard on this very dark man who was saying shame to top actors and uh, that their fellow actor is uh, sick, they're not doing anything. The Actors Guild of Nigeria is not a hospital. It is not, uh, 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 it is not Red Cross Society. The Actors Guild will provide the, the support it has to its top actors without making it public. So it was wicked and unthinkable that this somebody will call out who is not, who is looking for, who is looking for relevance. We we'll call top actors' names. I won't join issues with him because I know he's looking for relevance. I won't give him that he doesn't deserve. So thank you. Um, uh, thank no, you. let me. Yeah, Miss Ibu had had done his best last year when he announced that he was sick, uh, and his family uh, called for help. But he exhausted maybe all he had. It is not a bad thing for him to say, "My brothers, uh, I think I've exhausted all I have." Oh. That point mm -hmm. must be made. That point must be made. But it's also a clear and call for the guild he belongs to, to also establish a fund, hoping that he will also pay fees into it. Now, mm -hmm. the story of Amechi Monago has, has come to the public. Mm -hmm. The answer, the question also is, if a, a fund was established, will he contribute for those who were sick? So mm -hmm. this is to conscientize us. It's a flog on our conscience to say, let us do things when we are not in good, when we are in good health for those who are not in good health. It could be anybody's son tomorrow. So insurance policy, social security networks, HMO groups should be established. Then you talk about entertainment law. Most performers, uh, most, musicians. Uh, Anna, 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 please. Um, I will give you two minutes to, to to wrap up on that. Okay. Okay. First of all, we need to play. We need to play a commercial beat. Okay. Commercial all right. We need to, thank you. I still have two questions to ask, but there is no time. So just wrap up on the last statement you are making. 
uh, we need to get out in about uh, two minutes. All right. Okay. Thank you. So your microphone is cracking the sound. Boston, can you mute? Your microphone is making some. Okay, thank you. We're winding down. Today's show has been interesting. Kanayo, Kanayo is still on air. Uh, briefly wrapping up, you are going to talk about the entertainment law. Please yes. do it in nine seconds. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I, there are legal terms uh, we use as lawyers, if I ask Osifora or Alex now that uh, my brief has not been perfected, it's only a lawyer who can say, who can understand it. And what it means is that Alex has not paid me as his lawyer. That's what it means. So, entertainers, performers must understand that contracts always have lines. They always have hidden clauses. They should, either as an actor or a performer in music, try to get on with a lawyer. Don't bring the case to me. I'm not pleading. I'm not soliciting. But go to a lawyer to sign some lines for you so that those contracts uh, that you don't know about and the legal jargons and legalese, you don't understand you can have protection. That's what I have to say about entertainment law. Uh, uh, performers should not be going around without signing the necessary things. They should not do that by themselves. On copyright issues, Thank on copyright you. issues, you. it's still a, it's still a very start. <laughs> I know we have so much I'm so sorry we have to go. Some other time we are going to call you and we okay. can talk more. I still want to talk about Clinton, your advice to Clinton, and what would be your advice for other youth out there uh, as a father? Thank you so much. We'll call you again. Thank you. Again. Uh, thank, you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Kanayo, yeah. oh, Kanayo. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Alex, thank you. We need to go. Boston uh, Oshifawura. Uh, I, uh, I know, okay, okay, we'll just on, 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 on. <laughs> He's a leather so colleague. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Alex. We'll see you next week. Thank, thank you. you. Right, see sir. you next week. Thank and you. Right, it's a pleasure. We will see you next week. Everyone out there, have a wonderful weekend. Be nice to people. Have a good week. Also, bye. Sorry, sir. What is all this chasing? I'm chasing up on that. Uh, the gym, the problem. So, oh. yeah. So you are going to... off. Yeah. Okay. Ah, thank you for giving us time. So, I even did like this myself. Now fight me and then fight. Yeah. Because you know he interrupts you know, somebody like this. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What about the other shows now that are coming up? Yes, like okay, just to okay. Okay, thank you. Uh Facebook, we'll see you next week. Cheers. And thank you to Facebook. We'll see you next week. I mean, YouTube, I beg your pardon. Oh, what a day.